how do we build a healthy organization? Well, there's four things, four disciplines that all healthy organizations have to have. The first thing they have to do is they have to build and maintain a cohesive leadership team, which is what we're going to talk about in a second. You have to build and maintain a cohesive leadership team. Behaviorally, they have to be cohesive. That's what I'm going to talk about today. But in addition to that, and concurrently, you have to create organizational clarity, which means you have to get them intellectually aligned as well. Whether the answer is right or not, I don't know. They just have to have the same answer in their head about why do we exist, what's our strategy, what are our key goals, what are our values, all those things. Jim Collins does a good job talking about that. You've, you've seen a lot of this. But they have to be intellectually aligned as well as behaviorally aligned. Once they do these first two things, then, and only then, they have to move on to the next one, which is they have to over-communicate that clarity. They have to communicate it over and over and over again, and over and over again, and over again, and over again. They say now, research shows that employees in an organization have to hear things seven times before they believe it. Seven times. And I think that's because of the old Dilbert effect, you know, where, God bless you, where everybody says, you know, employees are our greatest asset. Quality is job one. Customers are always right. You know, want, want, want. It's like an old Charlie Brown episode where the adults are talking, you know. It's like, whatever. The last company I worked at said that. The next one will, too. It's only when people hear things over and over again and, and repeatedly in different forums and in different ways and from different people that they start to actually believe it. And yet most leaders I know don't like to over-communicate. Most leaders I know, whether they're a Myers-Briggs NT, which means rational for those of you who know, or just most leaders for whatever reason don't like to over-communicate because they find it to be redundant. And so many CEOs I work with fear redundancy. They find it to be a waste of time. And they don't want to insult their audience by repeating themselves. They're like that old story of the husband whose wife says to him, and it could be the other way around, but it seems to work better. The wife says to her husband, why don't you ever tell me you love me? And he says, well, I, I told you when we got married, I'll let you know if it changes. <laughs> right? And that is so true of many CEOs. You know, they're like, so why don't you repeat this? Well, I, I published the, I gave that speech at the beginning of the year at the kickoff meeting, and I put the white paper, I haven't changed anything. Great leaders have to over-communicate. They cannot fear being redundant in their communication of critical messages. As I like to say, if you're a great leader, then your people should be able to do a good impression of you when you're not around. As parents, we know this. I know if my twin boys say, if dad tells me not to do drugs one more time, I'm like, hey, fine, I'm going to say it until you get blue in the face. We as leaders have to do a better job of over-communicating. And then finally, we have to build some human systems, which sounds very wonky and boring. But we have to put in place some human system, some structure around how we manage people, how we hire, fire, reward, motivate. And the key to those human systems, all I'll say about this is, they need to be... They need to institutionalize our culture without bureaucratizing it. I wish I knew who came up with that phrase, because it wasn't me, and it's, I love it. We have to institutionalize our culture without bureaucratizing it.